have enough time for that. You're very funny, Jerry. That's what I always tell people. Jerry's a funny guy. Funny guy! <laughs> right here! Tom, give me a break. Good joke. Pick up that piece of trash, Tom. Tuck in your shirt. What are you doing? Have a sense of pride, huh? In fact, why don't you take a lap? Go run a lap! I'm timing you! Kevin. You know, Ben is unique. You know, these guys are unique. They're championship runs. I mean, this one's unique. Kevin down Cherry Hill. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. I make you laugh. But I don't think you should be butting in when I'm talking to my team. You're my assistant, okay? You're supposed to back me up and go get me juice boxes when I tell you. Now go get me a juice box. This is Running Up the Score. Running up the score with Jerry Napoleonello, 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. We are live on Zeno Live, and we are going to be going with the trends, and we're live on Periscope as well. Uh, the call-in number is always 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. We have a lot to get to today. First and foremost, a very much-anticipated NFL draft is tomorrow. And in the spirit of that, we're going to give you a, our new segment, 30 Mock. And no, not 30 Rock. It's going to be 30 minutes. Uh, it was a 30-minute mock draft. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sticking with the NFL, two veteran running backs are changing digs and cities, one of which is coming back to the league. NBA playoffs are turning out to be um, more fun off the court rather than on the court and why NHL has some problems with their playoff seedings. We have so much more for today. Thank you for joining us today. But first, remember to join in the conversation through our next hour here by calling in at 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. Or tweet us at R-U-T-S Sports. You can also follow us on Instagram, R-U-T-S Sports. And like our page on Facebook, R-U-T-S Sports. First, we'll get into uh, the NBA playoffs here. You know, we have, uh, you know, a lot a lot of stuff is going on, but it's really, to me, I, I feel like this, this NBA playoffs um, have not been what kind of everybody was anticipating. I, I don't, I don't think this is as great as anybody, as everybody thinks uh, th- this, I, I, I can't. I can't explain it. I feel like, like I said earlier, like it, it feels like it's more interesting off the court than it is on the court because, you know, you got all these, um, you know, things going on off the court in the press conferences and, and everything like that. And, you know, most of the talk is about everything that's going on off the court. Not much is, you know, basically we know what is going to happen. We know it, you know, and for people that sit there and are saying, oh, you know what, you know, the Wizards could beat the, 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 the Cavs, the Raptors can beat the Cavs, it's not going to happen. It's Cavs Warriors. That's it. Just, just face it now. It's going to be the third year in a row, boring old Cavs Warriors, two best teams in the league, and, and you know Sitting back, obviously everybody wants to see the two best teams go at it at the, you know in the championship. That's what you want to see. But when these two championship teams, these two teams that are so much ahead of everybody else in the league, you know there's nothing interesting. You're you're sitting back in the off season and you know who's going to be there. It is so much of a difference between the top two teams 
and the other teams. Yeah, the, the, the Wizards have a chance to beat the Cavs. The, the Raptors have a chance to beat the Cavs. Uh, the Spurs have a chance to beat the Warriors. But it's not going to happen. These teams, yes, they might beat them. Nine, they may beat them one out of ten times. But this is a best of four, this is a best of seven series. These teams are not going to hold up for a best of seven series. It's just not going to happen. That that's it. So stop, you know, sitting back and trying to come up with scenarios on how this is going to change. It's not going to change. It's the Cavs and the Warriors, third year in a row. And I wanted to bring up a while ago, but I kept forgetting. Um, just. Between these two teams, obviously this will be the third year in a row that we have saw these teams go at it. Um, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like movies. Like, you know, people, it tends to be, the sequels tend to be worse than the original. Or vice versa in, in Bad Boys 2. That, 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 sh- that movie, that was the the one that you can say just totally went off the map on that kind of argument. The second one was better than the first. They're coming out with a third one, actually. But um, just the fact that, you know, the sequels aren't as good as the first one. And it was nice. You know, the, the first one, it was nice. Steph, LeBron. But now it's getting old. And, yeah, it might be an interesting finals. It might. Um, but I feel like with these two teams, LeBron James is going to have to do even more what he, uh, even more than what he did last year. And last year, I said I can't say anything about LeBron James anymore because of what he did and b- because of how he came back in that series. And I can't say anything about him anymore. I still, it, I still don't like him. Um, that's never going to change. But. The fact is, I can't say anything about him. But what I'm saying now with this coming, this coming finals, and obviously, you know, we know it's going to be the Cavs and the Warriors. It's, it, it's just done. It's done. So stop trying to come up with scenarios. It's done. Cavs, Warriors. LeBron James is going to have to do so much more than what he did last year to beat the Warriors because the Warriors are so much better than last year just from adding Kevin Durant and they're even they're even just as good without Durant that's the crazy thing about the the, the Golden State Warriors so it's going to be interesting to see I, I just the, the rest of the the rest of the playoffs leading up to that I, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter to me. I'm not. I'm not really uh, focused in on you know how good this is going to be. The best. The best series uh, so far is the uh, the Bulls and the Boston Celtics. A lot is going on with that. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but uh, the NHL playoffs. The uh, round two starts tonight. We have our uh, our matchup set. We got the Rangers against uh, Ottawa Senators, Washington Capitals against the Pittsburgh Penguins, Nashville Predators against the St. Louis Blues, and the Anaheim Ducks against the the Edmonton uh, Edmonton Oilers. Um, there's a lot of talk going on with with you know hockey because it's just crazy to everybody that the Capitals and the Penguins are playing in the second round. It, it it should not work out that way. It's it's absolutely absurd that it's working out that way. Um, these are the two best teams. And the fact that these two teams are playing now and not in the conference finals is ridiculous. Um, there's a lot, you know, a lot of talk about why the NHL changed their seating, why it happened like that. A lot of people think that maybe it's because of the bracket and they got too uh, fixated on having the, the NCAA tournament type feel, um, you know, being able to have a bracket for, for the fans um, so they could follow in. Um, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's stupid. 
the fact that these two are going against each other now. Um, I think it hurts the Capitals because the Capitals won the President's Cup trophy. Um, they were the best team in the NHL. They're the best team in the Eastern Conference. And they don't have the... They don't have the road that a number one team would have going into the playoffs. Usually it's, you know, you go up against the one and the eight, then you go on and on. And the fact that it can land out to be one and two in the conference finals. That's that's how all playoffs go. And the fact that they changed it is ridiculous. I'll get more into that. Um, but uh, we got the NFL draft coming up on uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be really good. It's going to be a really interesting uh, NFL draft because it, we're, we're, everybody's going to be wondering where these quarterbacks are going and what's going to happen with the Browns at number one. I mean, still there, there's a lot of talk that the the Browns may take Mitchell Trubisky at number one over Miles Garrett. And if that happens, that's going to flip this whole draft on its head because then it's like, all right, well, what happens after that? And, uh, we're, uh, I have, we have a mock draft going. Um, as I said earlier, uh, we're calling the new segment 30 mock, not 30 rock. It's 30 mock. Um, we're going to do this for the NBA draft as well. Um, you know, nobody really watches the, the MLB draft, obviously. Um, nobody really watches the, the NHL draft, which is, you know, it kind of sucks. But, um, I mean, we may even – we might be able to do an a NHL 30 mock. But um, right now we got the NFL 30 mock. We're going to get into that uh, right after the break. Uh, Marshawn Lynch is officially a Raider. They have agreed, uh, the Raiders have agreed to terms with the Seahawks for a trade. Um, nobody really knows the details to it, I don't think. I would have to really look it up. But Adrian Peterson signs a one-year deal with a one-year option. Um, both parties would like to play out the two years. The, 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 um, the Saints um, would like... Adrian Peterson to play out the two years, and Adrian Peterson wants to play out the two years uh, with the Saints as well. So that's going to be interesting. I think he got three mil. Um, so uh, those are the two veteran running backs that have found teams. Manny Machado and Dustin Pedroia had a little uh, spout um, in the uh, in the over the weekend in their series between the Orioles and the Red Sox. Um, Manny Machado went in hard, I think it was Friday night, went in hard um, into second base and spiked Pedroia. That started a whole thing. And then Sunday, um, Matt Barnes threw at uh, Manny Machado, um, threw high, which I don't agree with. You want to hit somebody, you hit him in the backside, you hit him in the back, you hit him in the leg, whatever you want to hit him. Um, you don't hit him, you don't go high, you don't go for the head. Um, that's ridiculous, and you'll see. I'll put up the uh, the GIF or GIF. I, you know the, the 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 crazy thing is I don't know how. Like there's so many different ways of saying that. You know GIF. I've read that it's GIF. Um, I've also heard that it's GIF. Uh, you know you don't know it's a GIF basically but um from what i what i've read it's a gif i don't i don't know um but that's not here nor there um but i will show you it of pedroia's face um basically saying it's not on me i would have hit you on the first day so uh that was kind of that was kind of funny uh, madison bumgarner idiot of the week he goes out on a uh, day off with his family, dirt biking, falls off, hurts his shoulder, his ribs, and everything like that, and he's going to be out for a little while. Now, I've, I've been saying, if it wasn't for it being Madison Bumgarner, he'd be gone. 
I mean, this go, this goes along with Aaron Boone. The year before, he hits a he hits a home run against the Red Sox to send the Yankees into the World Series. The next year, he did something. I forget what it was. I don't know if he broke his leg or tore his knee or did something to his arm, something like that. Whatever it was, he did it playing basketball. It was in the contract that if you hurt yourself doing any one of these activities that has nothing to do with baseball, you're gone. And the Yankees, they, they stuck to it, and they got rid of Aaron Boone. He was the, the hero the year before, and the next year he was gone. If it wasn't Madison Bumgarner, he would be gone, 100%. Because if, <laughs> if they were to release him now, I guarantee you he would have 30 however teams calling him asking for him to pitch for them no matter how long it takes for him to be hurt. That's that's what it's going to be and and the the fact that um it's Madison Bumgarner is the only reason why he's still on the team. Um but when we get back, it's time for the 30 mock. We're going to give you the first 16 picks that I did. Um no trades, no, no, nothing with that. Um, I'm just going by the the list as it is, and uh, that will do it. Um, and we'll have our first segment uh, for our new segment, Thirty Mock. When we get back, you're listening to Running Up the Score. All those radio. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All Noise Radio is an internet radio station that's fully produced by graduates of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. From modern rock to old school hip hop, country to classical, news, talk, sports, and more. It's the noise you can't ignore. Log on to allnoiseradio.com. Fire up the station. Find out more about your favorite jocks. Get the latest CSB news and more. Plus, you can take All Noise Radio with you on the go for free. Just download the Live 365 app to your iPhone, iPod Touch, or BlackBerry and search All Noise Radio. Check out tomorrow's broadcasters today at allnoiseradio.com. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Hey, this is Jerry Napoleonello, host of Running Up the Score. We are live once every week at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we hit on all the top headlines in the world of sports. You can also find us on Stitcher, iTunes, and those of you that like the visual aspect, check us out on YouTube. Running Up the Score. We run up the score on sports radio. Cyber Station USA is the future of radio. Get your business into the online future at the world's largest internet radio station. From banner placement on our homepage to any of our broadcaster stations, commercials on our video player, audio spots on any of our shows, or at the beginning of any of our on-demand broadcasts. Cyber Station USA offers competitive rates with a worldwide reach, a fully integrated one-stop shop social media broadcast platform. For more information, please contact our sales department at Cameo at CyberStationUSA.com. Running up the score, be sure to call in at 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. It's time for our new segment, 30 Mock. Mock draft in 30 minutes. We'll start it off with number one, the Cleveland Browns. Now, their needs are definitely at quarterback. Their needs are at defensive line. Their needs are at safety, and their needs are at wide receiver. Now, when it comes to these, you know, them... What they don't need is really a bad draft, and they need they need a good draft. They need, um, you know, basically somebody to pan out, especially at quarterback. Um, and I'm gonna bring up who I think they should be taking. Number one is always, you know, uh, kind of interesting, and they have, you know, basically it's. Who who are we going to take? And a lot of talk has been Miles Garrett, obviously, and Mitchell Trubisky. 
um, two of the best at their position. I mean, Miles Garrett is the best overall in in the draft. Um, and when it comes to Miles Garrett, uh, you know, I I think he's a phenomenal uh, player overall. Um, maybe a little bit with his, um, I guess, his head. Um, you know, when it comes to emotionally, uh, I, you know, I don't know what to, what I feel about him. Um, and I'm going to bring that up in a little bit and what I, you know, basically we, we meant to bring it up last week. We wanted to talk about it. We had a whole segment ready for it and we just got stuck, you know, basically talking about everything else. Cause there was just so much to talk about, but the fact that, um, these athletes nowadays are so mentally soft. The fact that um, these, basically everybody in the world is mentally soft and it's just, and it's annoying. And I, I'll, I'll get into it uh, in a little bit, but um, the pick is in. The Cleveland Browns will take with the number one overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns will select defensive end Miles Garrett, Texas A&M. I feel like you cannot pass up on the number one pick in Miles Garrett. You can't pass him up. Um, you know, when it comes to him, it's a no-brainer. He's the best pro- uh, prospect in the class, superb pass rusher, and a rare talent. You have to take him. Um, so we're moving on to number two, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Like I said, we're not going to be making trades. We're not going to be doing any of that. Um, so uh, the number two, uh, San Francisco 49ers, their needs are at quarterback, cornerback, wide receiver, offensive line, and pass rush. Um, they don't need a running back. Uh, when it comes to them, um, you can basically uh, take, I mean, basically anything on the offensive side of the, the ball. Um, and some people may think uh, they would take Mitchell Trubisky because they need a quarterback. But I don't think they're going to take a quarterback here. Um, I have them taking um, something that they, they desperately need. And... Uh, The pick is in. The San Francisco 49ers will take with the second overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, defensive end Solomon Thomas Stanford. Uh, As I said, you know, a lot of the the people in the 49ers facility liked uh, Mitchell Trubisky, um, but everybody loved uh, Solomon Thomas. Uh, He he would work perfectly in their defensive scheme. Um, He... uh, He has ties uh, like the new general manager and is the perfect blend of competitor and leader. He can do it all. Um, So I'm having the 49ers select Solomon Thomas out of Stanford defensive end. Uh, Number three, we have the Chicago Bears. Uh, Their needs are at safety, cornerback, quarterback, defensive line, tight end, wide receiver, don't need running back, right guard, left guard, or center. So right up basically on their front line, they're shirt up in the middle. They need uh they they could use outside offensive linemen uh at the tackle position. They could they obviously need a lot on the offensive side of the ball, especially, you know, um they have their quarterback in Mike Glennon now. They just picked him up uh, over the offseason. Who knows what we're going to get from him because, I mean, he really – he hasn't had a starter role for a long period of time. So it's going to be interesting to see what Mike Glennon brings to the table for the Chicago Bears. But their number one, their number one um, need is in the secondary. And um, – when it comes to the Chicago Bears at three. The pick is in. The Chicago Bears will select with the number one, uh, number three pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. Safety out of LSU, Jamal Adams. 
Um, I think it, it, it shores up exactly what they need um, when it comes to that. They need secondary help, and uh, they could have gone with Jonathan Allen. As I said, uh, Solomon uh, Thomas was taken uh, by San Francisco uh, in the second pick, um, but they've had a bigger need, and the se- secondary was just terrible this past season. Um, so I'm having them select Jamal Adams out of LSU to help out that secondary that was pretty bad last year. Um, we're going to have to hurry up here. Uh, number four, Jacksonville Jaguars. Their needs are running back, tight end, offensive line, defensive line. They don't need a cornerback, and they don't need a linebacker. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars... <laughs> We'll select with the number four overall pick in the NFL 2017 draft. They will select defensive line Jonathan Allen out of Alabama. Now, this is a guy that I liked a lot. Um, I put him up there with Miles Garrett. Um, You know, it's always when you see Alabama next to their name, um, it's just a different feel to that player Um, because you know – that they've been in an NFL type um, environment, um, an NFL type coach, um, and I feel like they can be an NFL type player. And when it comes to Jonathan Allen, I think he'll be that type of player. I think he's going to be a beast on the uh, the def- defensive line. Um, and I think Jacksonville can add Jonathan Allen to that already pretty decent uh, defense and continue on with that number five Tennessee Titans their needs cornerback wide receiver tight end safety linebacker they don't need a quarterback they don't need a running back they don't need a left tackle or a right tackle their offensive line is actually really good Um, I would put them number two or number three depending on where I have Oakland Um, but this is a very good offensive line uh, especially with DeMarco Murray last year uh, running the ball the way he did quarterback obviously Marcus Mariota they don't need there um, so everything else they def- desperately need a wide receiver um, and they def- definitely need uh, secondary help with the fourth uh, with the fifth pick overall the Tennessee Titans will select cornerback Marshawn Lattimore out of Ohio State uh, this is a very big pick, I feel. Um, he's the best pure cor- uh, cover corner in the class and would fill a major need in Tennessee. Number six, we have the New York Jets. Now, they basically can go with anything. Um, they need help everywhere, especially quarterback. A lot of people think that they're going to take a quarterback. I don't know. Um you know, which quarterback they're coveting. Um, But with the sixth pick, the New York Jets, I have selecting (laughs) quarterback Deshaun Watson out of Clemson. Um, I feel that they need a quarterback, obviously. I think Deshaun Watson is somebody that they could bring in just to be a quarterback. Do I think that he's going to be able to do anything with the New York Jets? No. I think the New York Jets are a very bad team to have um, basically working with a quarterback that needs more help than anything. With the Jets, I feel it comes down to getting a veteran that doesn't need any help that's that's my thing like I feel like with when it comes to the Jets they're just not good at fine-tuning a quarterback and um, I I just I don't see that happening here Um, number seven Los Angeles Chargers this will be the first the last one before I go to break I wanted to get through 16 here but that's not going to happen the Los Angeles Chargers um, I have Uh, Their needs, safety, wide receiver, defensive line, offensive line, uh, quarterback. They don't need a tight end. They don't need a cornerback. And they uh, obviously don't need a kicker or a punter. Um, 
with the seventh pick. The Los Angeles Chargers will take safety. Malik Hooker out of Ohio State, um, one of the best secondary players uh, in this draft. Um, he's a great center fielder. He, uh, I mean, he's, he's someone that could really sure up a secondary. And um, going to the Los Angeles Chargers, it would definitely help um, overall that defense. But I'm going to have to go to a break here. Um, I got a lot to fit in um, here, and I'm going to try to – uh, bang out the the next um, 11 or so, nine picks uh, right as I come back from the break. You're listening to Running Up the Score. Cami Entertainment Group and Cyber Station USA are now part of Stitcher, a free radio app for your smartphone. With Stitcher, you can listen to live programming as well as archive radio programming right on your phone. To obtain Stitcher, just go to the App Store for your particular phone. Go to search, then type in Stitcher. That's Stitcher. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Then download. It's that simple. Stitcher, a free radio app for your smartphone. Convenient access to live and archive Cyber Station USA programming on your mobile phone. That's Stitcher. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Cyber Station USA. Always on the go. Hey, this is Jerry Napoleonello, host of Running Up the Score. We are live once every week at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we hit on all the top headlines in the world of sports. You can also find us on Stitcher, iTunes, and those of you that like the visual aspect, check us out on YouTube. Running Up the Score, we run up the score on sports radio. All Noise Radio. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. All Noise Radio is an internet radio station that's fully produced by graduates of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. From modern rock to old school hip hop, country to classical, news, talk, sports, and more. It's the noise you can't ignore. Log on to allnoiseradio.com. Fire up the station. Find out more about your favorite jocks. Get the latest CSB news and more. Plus, you can take All Noise Radio with you on the go for free. Just download the Live 365 app to your iPhone, iPod Touch, or BlackBerry and search All Noise Radio. Check out tomorrow's broadcasters today at allnoiseradio.com. Powered by the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Hey mama, I made it to the bright lights and stages. I remember I was so impatient. And now we got the whole lot of waiting. Hey mama, I made it to the bright lights and stages. We are back, running up the score. Be sure to call in at 605-562-7085. Press 5 to be heard live. Tweet us at RUTS Sports or head to our website, rutsports.weebly.com. Um, before I get into the NBA and the NHL playoffs, I wanted to bang out uh, the rest of these uh, up to 16. Um, as I said, uh, so far, Cleveland Browns, I have taken the, uh, Miles Garrett. Uh, 49ers, I have taken Solomon Thomas. Chicago Bears, I have taken Jamal Adams. Jacksonville, I have taken Jonathan Allen. Um, Tennessee Titans, I have taken Marshawn Lattimore. Jets, I have taken Deshaun Watson. And the Los Angeles Chargers, I have taken Malik Hooker. So number eight, Carolina Panthers. They need a running back, and that's what they're going to get um, when it comes to the draft at number eight. Carolina Panthers will select with the eighth overall pick running back Leonard Fournette out of LSU, something that they desperately need a running back, and they will get it. Um, Nine, Cincinnati Bengals. They need defensive end, linebacker, offensive tackle, offensive guard, running back, and they don't need a quarterback, they don't need a punter, and they don't need a center. Um, So with the eighth pick... Ninth pick, I'm sorry. Uh, Ninth pick, Cincinnati Bengals will take linebacker Hassan Reddick out of Temple, something they need, obviously, and Hassan Reddick will give them uh, to sure up one of their needs. Um, Number 10, Buffalo Bills. They need a cornerback, wide receiver, and a linebacker. They don't need a safety, defensive end, or an offensive lineman. So with the 10th overall pick... The Buffalo Bills will select... Wide receiver Mike Williams out of Clemson. They need a wide receiver. He's the best wide receiver in the, in the draft, and they'll get him. Uh, number 11, we have the New Orleans Saints. They need a defensive end, cornerback, safety, offensive line, and a defensive line. Number two, uh, they, don't, they don't need a quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, or a linebacker. As I said earlier, they just added uh, Adrian Peterson, though, so that will help out their offense as well. Um, 
so what I felt they should go with was defense. So with the 11th overall pick, the New Orleans Saints will select defensive end Derek Barnett out of Tennessee. Um, Their number one need was defensive end, and they got him. Number 12, the Cleveland Browns will come back here. Um, as I said earlier, they need a quarterback. They need a defensive line. They need uh, safety, and they need wide receivers. So earlier, they got their defensive end, um, and they may get their quarterback. <laughs> Number 12, overall pick, Cleveland Browns will select quarterback Mitchell Trubisky out of North Carolina. Um I don't know if he's going to last this long, to be honest with you. Um, just the way that everything was working out um, in my mock draft, uh, I, it fell into their lap, so I felt that they're going to take him at 12 if he's there, obviously. Um, do I think that they're going to wait that long? Do I think that they'll trade up? It's a possibility, so we'll see what happens. Um, Number twelve, uh, number thirteen, Arizona Cardinals. Um, they need a cornerback, quarterback, inside linebacker, wide receiver. They don't need a running back. They don't need an outside linebacker, and they don't need an offensive tackle. Um, so, with the thirteenth overall pick, the Arizona Cardinals will select cornerback Marlon Humphrey out of Alabama. Um, number fourteen, Philadelphia Eagles. They got this pick from the Vikings. Um, They need a cornerback, running back, defensive end, wide receiver, and they don't need a quarterback, guard, or a safety. I think one position that will help them hugely, um, I think they're going to get here, and this is my selection for the Philadelphia Eagles. With the 14th overall pick, the Philadelphia Eagles will select running back Christian McCaffrey from Stanford. Uh, The 15th pick is the Indianapolis Colts. They need defensive defensive end or outside linebacker, cornerback, running back, guard. They don't need a center or a kicker. Um, And with the 15th overall pick... The Indianapolis Colts will select defensive end Charles Harris out of Missouri. They need a defensive end. They got him. Uh, number 16th, uh, the number 16 pick is the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it sucks that Tom could not be here uh, to announce his pick, um, but I'll do that. This is a this is um, a pretty. I guess you know this is. This might not happen. I don't know. We'll see. Um, But at the number 16th overall pick, the Baltimore Ravens will select linebacker Reuben Foster out of Alabama. Now, there's been a lot of talk with him. There's been a lot of talk with Jabril uh, Peppers that they had a uh, diluted um, urine sample. Now, they're... Obviously, when it comes to a diluted uh, urine sample, the overall thought about this whole thing is you're diluting the sample so it doesn't come up where you have had drugs in your system. So basically, that could be anything. That could just be, um, you know, basically pounding water uh, down. But when you actually look into it now... A a diluted sample could be where a player drinks 48 ounces of water in about a three-hour, I guess, period. So if this is happening at the combine and these players are pounding down water because they have to... um, how is that not going to dilute a, st- a thing? And the fact that you're that they make it so that basically you failed a a test because of a diluted uh, diluted sample is ridiculous. Because who knows? He th- these two might not have been on drugs or had drugs in their system. It's just they were drinking a lot of water, and they get it to where they failed now 
and it hurts their draft stock. And that could that could be where the, it's not their fault. And that's where I think it's a little ridiculous. I think they have to change their, their ways when it comes to um, their policy. And uh, I guess Joe Thomas feels the same way. Um, he called the NFL out on Twitter. Um, he said, testers should be able to see its dilute right when he receives a sample and can, and can then request more samples until it's not dilute. No player should ever have a failed test for a dilute system, uh, sample, especially at the combine where peop- players frequently chug water to gain weight or you're chugging water to hydrate for a day of grueling physical testing. Lack of hydration leads to a significant decrease in performance. And he's tr- and it's right. Uh, I mean, he also had more to say. Question to all my NFL brothers: Have you ever had a dilute cyst- uh, sample in the NFL where they just made you pee again? I have. Jay Feely said, "I did. Waited around for a couple hours until I can go again." Um, Joe Thomas also said, "Here's to people who love water. Just don't let uh, NFL commish know. I hear the NFL is anti-water." So. Um, it you know it's it's where it, it's messed up to be honest with you it's messed up um but going on to the NBA playoffs the NHL playoffs uh NBA playoffs Cleveland Cavaliers uh Indiana Pacers Cleveland uh sweeps this four zip uh Chicago Bulls Boston Celtics series is tied 2-2 Rondo's still out for game 5 tonight um Jimmy Butler and Marcus Smart had a little um you know, scuffle during the game in game four. Um, and it, Jimmy Butler had some interesting comments uh, later on in the press conference that night. It was pretty funny. I don't have the sound clip for you right now, but um, Milwaukee Bucks, Toronto Raptors, uh, the Toronto uh, Raptors lead this 3-2. to two. Washington Wizards and Atlanta Hawks tied 2-2. Game is on right now. Golden State Warriors, Portland Trailblazers. Golden State just totally worked Golden State uh, Portland up and down. Uh, Golden State wins it four zip. San Antonio Spurs, Memphis Grizzlies. San Antonio's leading this series three two. Houston Rockets, Oklahoma City Thunder. Houston wins it four um, one. There and as I said earlier, that it's been the NBA has been more fun off the court than on the court. And um, I'm gonna play the uh, what happened with Westbrook in uh, game four in the press conference uh here's what the um the reporter asked and this is what you hear from westbrook steven second time in three games uh you guys really struggled when russell went to the bench you were out there for part of that what goes on when he goes to the bench why is houston so successful and, and do you sense that that they sort of get an energy boost just from him going out of the game hold on steven <clears throat> I don't want nobody to try to split us up. We all one team. Regardless, if I go to the bench, if Steve was on the floor, if I'm off the floor, we in this together. Don't split us up. Don't try to split us up. Don't try to make us go against each other. Try to make against Russell and the rest of the guys. Russell against Houston. I don't. I don't want to hear that. We in this together. We playing as a team, and that's all that matters. That's it. Yeah, Russell, I'm not trying to split you up, but twice in three games, you guys have not played well at all. When you've gone to the bench, That's fine. We, and say, I'm just say, trying to figure out what's going say, on. Russell, you ain't played well at all. Say Russell and the team is, haven't played well. Don't say when Russell goes out, the team don't play well. It don't matter. We in this together. That may that may be, Russell, but I've asked Stephen a question. Cool. And it's, it's a legitimate question. you. Next question. It's a legitimate question. Next question. Next question. Next question. Well, Next question. No, I think we won't keep the microphone. I had a question for Ste- I had a question for Stephen, and it wasn't answered. And I don't understand if Stephen wants to say he still hasn't said anything. If he wants to say I don't want to answer that, fine. But next question, please. Now I like both sides of this. I like that um, the reporter kept going. Um, you know, he's doing his job. And this goes uh, hand in hand with what happened with Pac-Man Jones the other day um, where he said, I don't want to talk about this, but in reality, you have to talk about it. Um, So, you know, the reporter brought it up. You know, Pac-Man said, I don't want to talk to you anymore, blah, 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 whatever. Um, So I like the fact that this reporter kept going with it, kept going with it. He was right. 
I also like what Westbrook is doing. Now, a lot of people don't like what Westbrook did. He basically spoke for Steven Adams. No, he's not doing that purposely. He's not doing it to have the, the spotlight on him. He's basically saying he doesn't want uh, people to look at him as as different than an Oklahoma City Thunder. He like he doesn't want to be looked at as Russell Westbrook. He wants to be looked at as a Thunder. Um, and I understood what he said. But now I also understand what they're coming from here. Um, Westbrook played 194 minutes in the series of five games in which Houston won four. When Westbrook was on the floor for 39 minutes per game, the Thunder outscored Houston by 4.9 points per 100 possessions. Um, we had Taj Gibson, who was a plus 13 and a, uh, 13 and a half. Steven Adams was a plus 7 and a half. Um, posted even better net ratings when they were on the court. When Westbrook wasn't on the court, Oklahoma City was even worse than you probably thought. The Thunder were outscored by 51.3 points per 100 possessions while Westbrook watched from the bench for a total of 46 minutes during the series. That's that's about one full game scattered through five games of total ineptitude. In real terms, when Westbrook sat this series, the Thunder were outscored 137 to 79 in 45 and a half minutes of total court time. They lost by 58 points without Russell Westbrook playing. For the entire series, Houston only outscored Oklahoma City by 43 points. So the other night, what, uh, well, yesterday I think it was, Westbrook was on the bench for six minutes. The Houston Rockets outscored the Thunder in those six minutes, 27 to 9. So yes, there is a big difference when Russell Westbrook is not on the court. We're going to take a break. Um, I'll play the uh, Game 5 tape of what he said in the press conference and also Pat Beverly. Uh, When we get back, you're listening to Running Up the Score. This is the evolution of radio. Cyber Station USA. Our inventions change us. They make us think differently. Something new added to the real world. The leading edge of evolution. That development has got to be delivered. CyberStationUSA.com The most sophisticated that I've ever seen. I'm not sure exactly what the future is, but I'm pretty sure it's not going away. Hey, this is Jerry Napoleonello, host of Running Up The Score. We are live once every week at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we hit on all the top headlines in the world of sports. You can also find us on Stitcher, iTunes, and those of you that like the visual aspect, check us out on YouTube. Running Up The Score, we run up the score on sports radio. Connecticut School of Broadcasting founder Dick Robinson. You know, the media business has changed a lot since we opened our doors in 1964. Now media content is everywhere, on air, online, on the go. More than ever, companies are looking for people to help drive this new media. At Connecticut School of Broadcasting, you'll get hands-on training on the latest software and equipment in a matter of months, not years. Connecticut School of Broadcasting has placed thousands of grads in broadcast media careers. It's all about versatility. You see, at a radio station, if you you also know how to shoot, edit, and post videos, you become a pretty hot commodity. That's the training you get at Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Connecticut School of Broadcasting with locations up and down the East Coast from Massachusetts to Miami. Call 1-800-TV-RADIO or log on to GoCSB.com. Connecticut School of Broadcasting, the nation's oldest and largest group of broadcast media schools. Redefining training in radio, TV, and new media. Get trained. Get connected. 1-800-TV-RADIO I don't want to know, no, no, no Who's taking you home, 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 home And loving you so, 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 so we are back calling at 605-562-7085 Press 5 to be heard live Tweet us at R-U-T-S Sports before we finish up the rest, the back end of the 30 mock, um, I want to keep talking about the NBA playoffs. And this is uh, the, um, the words that were exchanged in the press conference between Pat Beverly and Russell Westbrook. 
Uh, Russell, things got a little contentious between you and, and uh, Patrick Beverly. Can you talk about you know kind of what happened there? Oh yeah, he was talking about he was first team all defense, but I I, I, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about because I had 42 at the time. Um, the series, you know, I don't know what he talking about. Maybe he was dreaming of some. I don't know. Sorry, excuse my cuss word, but. I don't know what he was talking about, but I guess he, he wanted to be first team all defense or something. Maybe he was dreaming about it. I don't know. So that's what he had to say, and then Pat Beverly said this. Pat, congrats on the win. Uh, can you talk, walk us through a little bit about um, kind of what did Russell Westbrook say to you during that exchange that got you so you know upset? No, no. Uh, that's actually the first time we uh, – We've exchanged words this, uh, you know, this postseason. But uh, he's a uh, he's a really good player. He uh, applies a lot of pressure just due to his athleticism and his and his creating ability. But now it shocked me because he said he looked up and said, "No, it can guard me." I got 40 points. I'm like, "That's nice." He took 34 shots to get it. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not trying to I'm not out there trying to bash anybody, but. I mean, you know, men lie, women lie, but the numbers don't. Collectively, as a unit, we've done a great job on them. Uh, we try to make them um, shoot a lot of tough shots, and, and uh, the numbers show. So uh, they, they kind of, you know, exchange words here. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. I thought it was funny. Um, and this is what I meant. Like, you know, there's more things going on off the court than there are on the court. And I think those are more interesting what's going off the court than on the court. Um, you know, this is what we're, we're waiting for. I mean, um, you know, everybody's waiting for what's going to happen in the press conference. And, um, you know, the same thing happened with um, – you know, Jimmy Butler and Marcus Smart, that was interesting. That was funny. Um, the same thing is going on with Chris Paul, too, with the reporters. I mean, he's got nobody to talk to, you know, about, like, you know, going at it against each other. But um, <clears throat> when it comes to, you know, the reporter, I mean, the reporter in in the Chris Paul thing, I didn't I didn't get to, to get the audio for that either. I was kind of rushing today. Um, I, had a, I put a lot into uh, the uh, the draft, but um, Chris Paul, basically, you know, he got asked the question, um, "Do you think that the the Clippers are going to come back for Game Seven? And Chris Paul was basically like, "What? Like, what kind of question is that? Of course, like, what, like." In in a way, like, I understand what Chris Paul was saying. I mean, that is an idiotic question. I mean, really, what is what is he supposed to just sit back and say, yeah, you know what, I don't think we're going to come back. I think we're done. So, you know, that that whole thing went down. Clippers, uh, Clippers Utah Jazz, Jazz are leading that 3-2. Um, NHL playoffs, first round is done. Um, Blackhawks. Lose to the Predators four zip, um, Wild lose to the Blues four one, Ducks beat the Calgary Flam- uh, Calgary Flames four zip, Edmonton beats San Jose four uh, two, Montreal Canadiens lose to the Rangers four two, Ottawa Senators beat the Boston Bruins four two, Capitals beat the Toronto Maple Leafs four two, um, Pittsburgh Penguins beat the Columbus Blue Jackets four one. As I brought up the, you know, the issues with the NHL seating and everything like that um, and basically went over round two, um, I think this Capitals-Penguins series is going to be amazing. I I think it's going to be a great series, but this should not be the time that we're seeing this series. This this should be a conference finals type series, and the fact that this is happening in, in round two is absolutely ridiculous, and the NHL has to look at this. They have to fix this. Uh, I know this is the second year that they're going with this playoff um, seeding you know, thing, but it's a problem, and it's a problem that the Capitals are the President's Cup trophy, and they're playing their hardest competition in, in the second round. It, it, sh- it shouldn't come down to that. It should come down to the Penguins and the Capitals. If they make it to that point, they should be playing in the conference finals. That's it. To get into the Stanley Cup, the two best teams going at it. Not now, like when we're looking at it now, like say the Capitals end up getting past Pittsburgh. I mean, this series is going to be is going to be terrible. You got the senator. Say the Senators beat the the Rangers. 
I mean, the Capitals and the Senators in a conference final? Now, the, the only way that this is going to look good for the NHL is if the Rangers beat the Senators. I, I'm, just, I'm being honest with you because either way, the Rangers against the Capitals is going to be a great series. The Rangers against the Penguins is going to be a great series. Either way. But just Ottawa is really throwing this off. Um, I don't want to see the Rangers in it, though. Uh, Nashville Predators, St. Louis Blues, uh, Anaheim Ducks, and Edmonton Oilers. Um, now it's time to get back into um, the the draft, and it's going to be 17 through 32. We're going to try to get this done in five minutes. Um, Washington Redskins, their need is defensive line, linebacker, running back, lo- left guard, quarterback, defensive back, wide receiver. They don't need a tight end. They don't need a left tackle or a right guard. Now it is time for who the Washington Redskins will take with the 17th overall pick. With the 17th overall pick, the Washington Redskins will take linebacker Gerard Davis out of Florida. They need a linebacker. They get him. 18 Tennessee Titans up again. They will select... With the 18th overall pick, Tennessee Titans will select t- a tight end David Njoku out of Miami. We move on to 19. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They need a running back, safety, tight end, defensive end, wide receiver. They don't need a quarterback. They don't need a tackle, and they don't need a guard. That's right. The pick is in. Number 19. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will select with the 19th overall pick. Running back Dalvin Cook, he stays in the state of Florida and is probably not going to be uh, too good for his off-field uh, problems, but it's, you know, it's a perfect fit for them. Uh, 20, Denver Broncos. They need offensive tackle, linebacker, cornerback, running back, tight end, wide receiver, kick returner. They don't need a center, quarterback, kick, kicker, punter, guard, or safety with the 20th overall pick. The Denver Broncos will select offensive tackle Ryan Ramchick out of Wisconsin. Uh, when it comes to the 21st overall pick, The Detroit Lions will select defensive end Taco Charlton out of Michigan. We go on to the 22nd pick, Miami Dolphins. Cornerback, safety, linebacker, defensive end, guard, defensive tackle, center. Those are their needs. They don't need a quarterback, uh, tackle, tight end, running back, or wide receiver. With the 22nd overall pick, Miami Dolphins will select safety Jabril Peppers out of Michigan, as I said with the whole dilute sample I was talking about before. Um, New York Giants will be selecting at 23. They need a tight end. Uh, They also need running back, tackle, linebacker, defensive tackle, quarterback to obviously uh, be the successor of... Eli Manning. Um, They don't need a wide receiver, cornerback, center, or safety. With the 23rd overall pick, the New York Giants will select tight end Evan Ingram out of Ole Miss. 24, the Oakland Raiders. As I said, they get uh, Marshawn Lynch now. They need a cornerback, linebacker, running back. Well, obviously, as I said, they got a running back, but they need a defensive tackle. With the 24th overall pick, the Oakland Raiders will select cornerback Kelvin King out of Washington. 25 is the Houston Texans. With the 25th overall pick, Houston Texans will select quarterback Patrick Mahomes out of Texas Tech. Hometown boy. Uh, 26, Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks will select cornerback Chidobe Owuzi out of Colorado. 27th pick is the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs will select with the 27th overall pick outside linebacker Takaris McKinley out of UCLA. 
with the 29th, uh, 28th pick, the Dallas Cowboys. They need a defensive end, cornerback, safety. They don't need a center. They don't need a guard. They don't need a running back. This was really hard for me because I really wanted different guys. Like, you know, there's been talks about Taco Charlton. There's been talks about Jabril Peppers. There's been talks about Takaris McKinley. There's been talks about TJ Watt. But there's also talks about this man. With the 28th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys will select safety. Obi Melifanuwu out of UConn. I don't know if I said that right, but whatever. We'll hear his name uh, tomorrow night. Uh, 29th pick is the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay needs cornerback, run, running back, guard, and an edge rusher. They don't need a quarterback, t- uh, tackle, tight end, or safety. With the 29th overall pick, the Green Bay Packers will select cornerback Adoree Jackson, USC. Um, 30th is the Pittsburgh Steelers. They need outside linebacker, inside linebacker, cornerback, safety, tight end. They don't need an O-lineman. They don't need a quarterback. With the 30th overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers will select wide receiver Corey Davis out of Western Michigan. Second best wide receiver in the draft. Um, the 31st pick is the Atlanta Falcons. Um, <clears throat> they need offensive guard, outside linebacker, defensive tackle, uh, f- fullback safety. They don't need a running back, quarterback, or a cornerback. Um, <laughs> With the 31st overall pick, the Atlanta Falcons will select offensive tackle Garrett Bowles out of Utah, the uh, highest-ranked offensive tackle in the draft. Uh, 32nd, we got the New Orleans Saints again. They got this in the, um, the uh, the trade for Brandon Cooks. Uh, they need defensive end, cornerback, safety, O-lineman, D-lineman. Um, as we picked earlier, the New Orleans Saints selected Derek Barnett, a defensive end. So we're going to keep going with the needs. The New Orleans Saints will select with the 32nd overall pick, cornerback Tredavious White, LSU. That will do it. For 30 mock, that will do it for running up the score. Um, hopefully next week we get Tom back, and maybe we'll even get Kevin back. We'll see. Who knows? Hopefully we do. Um, but that will do it for our first annual 30 mock. That will do it for running up the score. We'll be back next Wednesday. Talking sports one more time. We'll actually recap the draft and everything that we've saw, and uh, we'll have second round NBA playoffs. Uh, but that will do it. I'm Jerry. Be breezy. And it is all over. You've been listening to Running Up the Score on Zero.